This is my daily driver 3D printer. It's a Maker Gear M2 with the version 4 hot end, 24 volt hot end. Although there's one thing about it that I do not like. And that is this extruder. So the purpose of this extruder is to hold the plastic tightly against the drive gear and push it into the hot end out through this nozzle. So the issue I had with this was there is a screw here to tighten it and then your uh, bearing here which acts as a flywheel and as you can see it moves like that but it's bending the plastic itself which doesn't really make me comfortable. It also doesn't really seem to have much give. I mean this screw goes into a nut and uh, unlike other printers there's no spring on it allowing for variance in material thickness. So what I thought I would do is I would redesign this. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to redesign this and put it back together. And the files are in Thingiverse, so if you want to reprint your own, you can give it a shot. It's going to reuse the bearing and the shaft on the bearing because those are more expensive parts. So those will be constants. And this is a, a smaller bearing. It's not your standard uh, skate bearing. So yeah, let's look at the design. Then I'll print out the parts and show you how to assemble it. Fusion 360, I've drawn the Maker Gear motor and gearbox along with the extruder toothed wheel right there. So the first thing that we have is the motor magnet mount. So we have a location here for the spring. In this slot, there's going to be a spacer that will be a threaded aluminum spacer, which will give us a nice strong pivot point. Down here, we have a couple of uh, rounded nubs. The purpose of those is to help fit the filament guide. In the front of the filament guide and behind the motor mount, you'll see these uh, slots. Those are for 8mm by 3mm neodymium rare earth magnets. So what we want is a straight shot down through the filament. So what I typically try to do is I have the, the filament guide about halfway across the motor. See how you've got like a half moon there? Okay, next up we have the arm. This is pretty beefy and it has a little gap here. That's just to help air uh, flow past it. We're using the original bearing that came with the Maker Gear extruder, right? And then behind it, right in there, we need to have a gap for the nut on the bearing. We also have uh, some space here for four three millimeter by 10 millimeter screws that will mount into the gearbox. So this is the motor magnet cap. It has two countersunk screw holes for flathead screws. This one attaches into the shaft. That'll give us a really nice solid uh, connection point. And this one will just connect between two pieces of plastic. And uh, like the other pieces, this one is going to have magnets in it as well. Let's take a look from behind. There we go. These slots will have magnets as well. And this is what will attach the fan assembly to the motor assembly. Now this hole here, that's not for a magnet, that's just for a mating piece, which I'll actually show you here. Magnet fan cap. This is what the fan actually attaches to, and see how it has a shaft that goes through there? That helps this stay as straight as possible. I mean, the magnets will hold it on pretty well. This, along with this piece, will align it correctly. So we'll have countersunk screws going through that, coming out the front, which will attach to the fan. I mean, yeah, okay, it is more complicated than the original, but it will have a lot of magnetic quick release. So the filament should be pushed through with greater force and hopefully jam less or, you know, be more reliable at least. And if it does jam, you can pretty much disassemble most of this just with uh, by pulling the pieces apart magnetically. So that's the basic design. Let's get this printed and start assembling it. Okay, this is our motor mount. It has the space for the spring, the space for the aluminum shaft, and a screw goes into the back. Also, I have two eight millimeter neodymium magnets set here that will allow the quick release of the filament guide. I'm gonna take my quarter inch by three quarter inch long size six aluminum spacer and put it in there. That's gonna be our pivot point. 
So yeah, this has Imperial and Metric in it. Please send me your anguished comments from almost every other country on Earth besides America. So, hmm. All right. Okay. Let's put this in place. And we're going to affix it with four three millimeter by 10 millimeter machine screws. That matches up what's on the gearbox of the world famous Maker Gear extruder. Now, for you young'uns out there, you might not realize this, but Maker Gear got its start by building extruders that didn't suck for the early Maker bot printers, like the Cupcake and the Thingamatic. And back in those days, those printers used DC <laughs> motors for the extruder, and they were pretty inaccurate. So Maker Gear came up with their stepper motor with a gearbox assembly. So if you wanted a nice extruder for your DIY 2010, 2011 era 3D printer, you would use a Maker Gear motor. And then Maker Gear went on to make their own printers as well. You don't want to use anything longer than a uh, 10 millimeter long screw up because otherwise you might uh, go too far into the gearbox. You've got your stepper motor here and then the gearbox, which gives you a lot of torque on the toothed gear here. So we have two mounting points here. We have a hole here for a screw and then the threaded insert. So that will give us pretty good pressure to hold the filament onto the toothed gear. Okay, let's prep the pinch arm. I've got the bearing from the original extruder here. I'm gonna slide it into place. Another thing different with this design versus the original is that I actually have, a, I don't know if you can see it, but there's like a 3D printed uh, riser between the bearing and the arms around it. So the inner ring doesn't move and the outer ring does. So for best results, I like to have a little bit of plastic, a little lip of plastic that actually contacts that center ring so that the part of the bearing that does rotate is unencumbered. See how there's a space around it, top and bottom? That just ensures that the bearing has the best opportunity for rotation. So I did uh, bore out these holes a little bit more with the drill bit. So this is a one quarter inch hole and a five millimeter hole. Oh my gosh, I think I just heard someone in Germany die. They heard that and they just died and they're like, ah, oh, you Americans, ah! And they're like writhing in pain and when you're designing stuff like this, it's really easy to think, oh, the filament's 1.75 millimeters in diameter, so I'll just make a hole that's two millimeters, and that'll be good enough. Well, it's usually better to be 2.5 because the filament is curved because it's around a spool. So going back to the metric system, think of it this way. Yeah, a king's foot, a king's thumb is a pretty stupid measurement, but it's based off biology. Guess what else is based off biology? 10 fingers. So if some aliens came down to earth and they'd be like, oh, you have a base 10 system because you have 10 fingers. <laughs> How quaint. Of course, those same aliens would probably have a base 300 system because they've got 150 ganglia on each hand. All right, so uh, spring fits in there pretty good. Spring is a five eighths inch by one inch. It doesn't need to be a super strong spring. So we've already got a lever action going on here. Let's try it out. Put the filament in. Cool. So the next step is to add the magnetic fan clamps. So there's two pieces here. This attaches to the extruder. As you can see, it has a concavity there for the other side of the quarter inch aluminum shaft. But there's also places to put more of these eight millimeter by three millimeter neodymium magnets. So it's not just held in place by the magnets, it's also held in place by a little lip there and a post there. So to see the magnets will orient themselves the way they want to be. Next, let's attach the fans. I'm gonna use some uh, 
440 imperial screws that are about an inch long. You could also use an M3 metric screw. So we look at this piece, there are uh, chamfers on the back of it to allow the screws to countersink through. And unlike the, uh, the stock unit, the filament cooling fan isn't going to be attached to the, uh, you know, through to the motor with a very long screw. Everything will be attached to this, right? So let's start putting these screws through. And then we'll attach, I'll use some lock nuts. You could also use regular nut and some Loctite or a wing nut, whatever you want. Although there probably will be a good amount of vibration on something like this. Your screws will need to be long enough to go through the 3D printed part, the fan, which I believe is 10 millimeters, the uh, plastic shroud, and then the tab for the other fan as well. rotation right there. Here's the filament guide. I put neodymium magnets in it as well, so we should be able to just put that right in place. Nice! So if there is a jam, pretty easy to pull out and clear the jam. Usually the jams occur when you're retracting the filament and you have like a molten blob on the end. So let's install the magnetic fan mount. So this has a hole here which should snap onto our metal pivot shaft. That'll give us a nice solid rotation. Got some countersunk screw mounts here. So we're gonna have a little guy over here. I'm gonna use a half inch 440 flathead. And then over here into the threaded aluminum spacer, I have a half inch 632 flathead. So we have a threaded aluminum shaft in there as a pivot point being held on both ends with machine screws. Very solid. So this part of the assembly should be easy. Ta-da! It's got a little... What's causing that? Oh, it's... That is not flat enough. It's the countersink bit that apparently will last forever. Seriously, been using this thing for like 10 years. Let's try that again. There we go. So if there's a jam. Oh, I just pull off the fans. Oh, I just pull off the extruder guide. No problem. Oh, jam cleared. All right, I'm gonna put it back together. Time to resume my life. All right, I'm gonna plug in these fans and then we can give it a test. So I went to uh, Midwest Rep Rap Fest 2019 and anyone who brought a 3D printer got a free spool of atomic brand filament made right in Goshen, Indiana. I'm gonna use this because it's easy to see, especially against this black printer. Let's do a filament load. So I'm just gonna push the filament down until it hits the toothed gear. I can obviously feel it stop and extrude. There it goes. You can definitely see the arm move when it grips, which is nice positive reinforcement. Here comes the filament. Obviously this is what you need the filament guide for to make sure that it goes into the hole. Oh yeah, look at those nice teeth marks on the side of the filament. That lets you know you have a good grip. Okay, now that I showed you the teeth marks, I can put the filament guide back in. I made sure this is all clear, so it's a pretty straight shot. There are some rounded tabs that hold it in position because the magnets will physically hold it in position, but tabs align it in position. Then we can just uh, put on our, <laughs> look at that, awesome. Let's finish loading it. All right, it's going into the filament guide. Let's tuck this tube in there. Okay, starting to push the black out. 
let's make sure our design doesn't impede the side of the unit. Okay, you've got good clearances here. I'm switching over to white because if I'm going to test print something, it's going to be something that I actually need. Specifically, single-handed Xbox controller parts. First layer adhesion looks good. And as we all know, or at least those of us who 3D print, first layer is really the one that matters. Ah, so far so good. This is a pretty coarse resolution print that I'm making and has a lot of support material, but you know, it's fairly average part. Whoa, we're halfway there. Whoa, living on a prayer. Copyright strike. It's done. Oh, it's on there pretty good. All right, well, keep in mind, this is a fast quality print, but uh, everything appears to be there. Nice. Well, there you have it. My own custom designed, super grippy, easy magnet access, Maker Gear M2 redesigned extruder print head. What do you think? Would you like to try your own? Well, go on Thingiverse and get the files and let me know how it works for you. Guess we'll see you in the next video, whenever I make one. Who knows when that would be.